So this little section is all about the eye and how it works and the main structures in it. I'm just starting off with this then. So this is a diagram of the eye. Now, what has to happen here is the main function of the eye is to allow light to enter it and to focus it on this little spot at the back, which is the fovea. This acts as a receptor, so this is why it's linked with the nervous system. The light is the stimulus. The receptor is the retina, which is a layer of cells at the back which are sensitive to light. They will connect up with an optic nerve and they'll send an impulse along the optic nerve, which is basically a sensory neuron. Send it off to the brain, which is going to act as a coordinator. So that's why the eye is involved or included in this booklet. Okay, so if we look at this, well, what we should do is probably start at the front and look at all the layers that it passes through, where light would pass through on its way through the eye. So the first layer, which the light is going to pass through, is the conjunctiva. So the conjunctiva is just a little transparent coat at the front of the eye that protects the cornea, which is the second structure. Okay, so we just colour this blue part in. That blue part was the conjunctiva. The next part along then is this part in green, which is the cornea. So the cornea is a transparent window to the front of the eye. So if you look at somebody straight in the front of their eye, the bit that you can see through is the cornea. Its main job is to refract or bend light so that it can be focused on the retina. The next layer that light would have to pass through is the aqueous humor. Now the aqueous humor is this whole bit here at the front of the eye. Now it's called aqueous because it's a water-like fluid and it helps maintain the shape of the front of the eye. So you'll notice how the eye isn't a perfect circle here. It's actually a circle with a little bit bulging out. The reason it bulges out is because the aqueous humor pushes the cornea out and it helps maintain the shape of the front of the eye, which helps refract the light. Now after that, the light would travel past this little area, which is the iris. Now the iris is the colored part of your eye. So whenever people say they've got blue eyes, brown eyes or green eyes, it's actually their iris that is the colored part. And it has a very important job. It controls the amount of light entering the eye. Now, as well as that, it actually has to go through what we call the pupil, which is this part here. So I'll add that in, but the pupil isn't actually a structure. It's actually a hole in the front of your eye. Now, whenever you look in somebody's eyes, you can see their pupil, which is the black part, right in the center. The reason why it's black is because whenever light goes into the eye, it doesn't come back out. So all the light gets absorbed. But you're actually looking into the back of their eye through their pupil. The next part that the light will travel through is this part, the lens. And this part here is this little sort of circular structure. That lens can change shape to focus light on the retina. So we said that the cornea will refract the light. The lens is there to focus light. The next big part that we've got then is the two structures which help move the lens or change the shape of it. Now we're going to give them the same number. So we're going to call the ciliary muscle and the suspensory ligaments number seven. Now the reason why we're doing that is this part up here is the ciliary muscle. So it can either contract or relax. And then attached to that, we've got the sensory ligaments. Now they go the whole way around the eye. It's only because we're looking at a cross section of the eye that it appears that they're just at the top and bottom, but actually they'll go the whole way around the eye. And when the muscles contract, 
it either relaxes or pulls those ligaments and it changes the shape of the tendons or sorry it changes the shape of the lens now the light is then going to keep traveling and it'll travel through the vitreous humor now in this case we've got an aqueous humor at the front and a vitreous at the back the easiest way to remember which order they're in so which ones at the front and which ones at the back i literally just remember that at the front is a and at the back is v so it's in alphabetical order from the front to the back so aqueous humor at the front vitreous humor at the back now the vitreous humor is all this space in here and it just maintains the shape of the eye and keeps the retina pushed flat up against the back of the eye which then is the next layer that we come to the retina now this is the important one this is the one that helps which basically allows us to see because it detects color and details okay it contains photoreceptors known as rods which help us see in dim light and cones which help us see in bright light and allow us to see color the next week spot that we come to or the next area is the fovea now this is the part where there is most cones so that's where we see in most detail just this little spot here now when i show you a picture of the retina later on you'll see that it's slightly yellow so sometimes people just call it the yellow spot after that we've also got a choroid which is a layer just behind the retina and it supplies blood vessels which contain glucose and oxygen to the retina now the whole layer on the outside then is this protective coat called the sclera so whenever you talk about the whites of people's eyes it's the sclera which goes the whole way around their eye <clears throat> now as well as that we've also got two other little things we've got a blind spot which is just this area in here now the reason it's a blind spot is because this is where all the ret all the cells from the retina attach together to form the optic nerve so there is no photoreceptors there and then the final part that we've got is the optic nerve and that carries the nerve impulses to the brain this just shows us the main parts of the eye then so also what i'm going to do is highlight the most important bits for you so the first part is the conjunctiva and it is to protect the cornea and it stops dust and dirt entering the eye you might have heard of this if you've ever had conjunctivitis and that's basically when you get a little infection in the front of your eye and your eye looks a little bit pink and that's quite uncomfortable the next part the transparent part of the sclera which allows the light to enter the eye is the cornea now you need to know that it's transparent but you also need to know that it refracts the most light now that's important because later on we say down here that this thing the lens bends or refracts light but its main job is to focus the light rays the next area that we've got then is the opening in the middle of the iris through which light passes is the pupil now remember it's not actually a structure it's basically just a gap in your eye the next part then consists of muscles that contract and relax to control the size of the pupil is the iris now that's important so that we can see clearly and if it's very very bright we want to control the light so that it stops the retina getting damaged The next one, as I say then, is the lens, whose main job is to focus the light rays. 
The next part contains the photoreceptor cells that are sensitive to light, and that is the retina. So it contains the receptor cells which are sensitive to light, and the central part of the retina, which is the fovea, contains lots of light sensitive receptors. The next one then contains sensory neurons that link the retina to the brain by carrying electrical impulses is the optic nerve and that is an example of a sensory neuron. Then we've got the watery fluid in the front part of the eye that helps keep the eye at the right pressure. This part is the aqueous humor and then the jelly-like fluid which is between the lens and the retina keeps the eye spherical that is the vitreous humor this is somebody's eye from the front so these are the structures that we can see now obviously we have got Obviously, we have got here eyelids and eye lashes, which help protect it. The white coat around the outside is the sclera. The coloured part, which controls the amount of light entering the eye, is the iris. And then this part here is the pupil. Now, you can also see here that this side of it is white. This side is transparent, so if we were looking side on, we would be able to see the cornea as well. But the cornea is basically the transparent part here. So obviously it's very important to protect the eye from any damage, so there's several ways that's done. Firstly, you've got eyelids and eyelashes to protect against dirt or dust entering the eye. Then there's also tears, which clean the eye when we blink and contain enzymes, which kill any bacteria. You've also got the conjunctiva, which protects against infection and protects the cornea. The blink reflex protects against injury. This basically means if somebody's about to poke you in the eye or something's about to hit you in the eye, you will close your eyes in a blink. Your eyes are also set back in sockets, which is also known as the orbit, which reduces the risk of physical injury. So if you look at this, this just shows you the orbit. So it's basically the bony socket around here which your eye sits in. If somebody was to punch you, your eye sits back a little bit and it basically moves in there so that it doesn't get damaged. Now before we go any further, I think it's really important that you understand all the key structures and you're able to name them. So what I'd like you to do is try and pause the video here and see if you can label these number 1 to 14 and keep doing it until you can get them right. So here we go. Now, we're on to looking at how light is focused on the retina and also how the amount of light entering the eye has changed. But before we do that, we need to just understand how light enters the eye. So the first thing it has to enter through is the cornea. After the cornea, it needs to travel through the pupil. It gets focused by the lens, it then hits the retina, and the retina converts it into an electrical impulse, which gets sent along the optic nerve to the brain. So we've got the cornea, which is going to refract light, then the pupil, and its size can be controlled by the iris, which changes the amount of light. The lens then lets it through and that focuses it. Then it hits the retina. When it hits the retina, it creates an impulse and sends it along the optic nerve. And this just shows us the retina then. So this is a photograph of some of these eye. So if we look straight down the center of their pupil this is what they see and this is what opticians will be looking for so 
the retina is this entire red thing here. This spot in the center is the fovea. That's where the sharpest image is produced. And that's the area where most cones are found. Around the edges here, you tend to find more rods. Now these little things here are little blood vessels. So as I said, it's really important that all the cells of the retina get glucose and oxygen. And this area here is the blind spot and that forms the optic nerve. Now you might have seen this whenever somebody gets a photograph taken where their eyes look a little bit red. That's because it's taken with a flash and it's so bright that the light enters the eye and then it reflects out. Now the next week section of this is all about how light is focused in the eye and how the size of the pupil is changed so we control how much light enters the eye. So just looking at this little diagram here, this little diagram tells us two things. Firstly, that the image on the retina is inverted or upside down. So if you look at this, here is a little man. The light coming from his top travels through there, but because it's basically going through a pinhole, the light rays cross over and they're inverted, so they're upside down. The brain actually corrects it. So when you see an image, it actually comes into your eye upside down, but your brain automatically corrects it. As well as that, the light rays must be bent or refracted. And that is so that they can be focused on the retina at the back of the eye. Now, that process is called accommodation. And it involves the lens changing shape to focus light on the fovea. Now, there's two structures in the eye which refract light. First is the cornea. This actually carries out most refraction of the light rays. And the lens is for fine focusing. So this bit just shows us how the lens shape is altered. Now, it's going to be different depending on whether we're looking at close objects or far objects. But this bit just shows you how these two structures work. Now, this part here is the cornea. This part is the lens. Now, the main bit that we need to change the shape of is the lens. You can't really change the shape of your cornea very easily, but you can change the shape of the lens, but you do this automatically. Now, to do that, you rely on the ciliary muscle which goes the whole way around the lens and the ligaments, which are also attached the whole way around the lens. Now, it's important to get the terminology right for this. The ciliary muscle, because it's a muscle, can only contract or relax. And depending on what they do, it changes the suspensory ligaments. Now, ligaments are not muscle, so they can't contract or relax. They can either be slack, which is basically another word for loose, or taut, which basically means that they're pulled tight. Now, if you look at this, we can see how the ciliary muscle either contracts or relaxes, pulls or releases the suspensory ligaments, and that changes the shape of the lens. Now, depending on if we're looking at near or far objects, it's going to be slightly different. So this first one is focusing on near objects or close objects. So what happens is the rays of light are diverging from the close object. So it basically means if this object's really close to us, the light rays from it are diverging. It hits the cornea and the cornea refracts and goes through the lens. Now, when that happens, the light rays get focused on the retina. But what changes need to take place for that to actually happen? So for focusing on the near object, what has to happen is the ciliary muscle contracts and the sensory ligaments are slack. So the lens 
that comes more around it, or let's actually say, find a say fatter. And that means that closer objects will be in focus. More fraction has to take place to look at near objects. Now, this just shows you an easy way to remember it. So for close objects, we've got these diverging rays that travel through cornea, through the lens, and then they focus on the retina. So what you need to remember is ciliary muscle contract, the suspensory ligaments are slack, allowing the lens to become fat or more rounded, thus bending the light more. So what I would try and remember for this is the letters that I put in bold. For close objects, ciliary muscles contract, suspensory ligaments are slack. There is a rounder lens because there needs to be more refraction. And that's the key point from this. Ciliary muscles contract, suspensory ligaments are slack. Focusing on distant object is slightly different. So in this case, the rays coming from it are parallel. They still hit the cornea, they still need to go through the lens, and they still need to get focused on the retina. But this one's slightly different. When the ciliary muscle is relaxed, the sensory ligaments are taut, and then the lens is long and thin, so it's being pulled thin. This means that less refraction has to take place to look at distant objects. So again, a little summary. There's parallel rays coming in, they hit the cornea, they get refracted onto the lens. Not as much refraction needs to take place to focus them on the retina. So here's what happens. The ciliary muscles relax, the suspensory ligaments are taut, or pulled tight, making the lens long and thin, so the light doesn't need as much refraction. So, for far or distant objects, ciliary muscles relax, suspensory ligaments are taut, the lens is pulled thin because there is less refraction needed. And that's what you need to know from that. Now, for a summary, this is what you need to know. So near or close objects, the ciliary muscles contract, Suspensory ligaments are slack, which gives a fat lens. For distant objects or far away objects, the ciliary muscles relax, suspensory ligaments are taut, and you get a thin lens. Now this diagram is just to show you. Remember I said that here and here, it looks like the ciliary muscle and the suspensory ligaments are just at the top and bottom. But that's just because it was in a cross section. If we spun the eye round and looked at it, we would see that the ciliary muscles go the whole way around, as do the suspensory ligaments. So this little section then is about controlling the light intensity, which is called the pupillary reflex. Now, this basically has two functions. First one, it allows us to see clearly by letting more or less light in. And the second one is it protects the retina from damage. So if we look at this, this part here is somebody's iris. This part is somebody's pupil. Now, by changing the light in a room, you can change the size of the iris, which changes the size of the pupil. Now that's quite important because what happens is the amount of light changes the size of the iris, which then changes the size of the pupil. Now, if you look at this, this one's a little bit slower. This shows the same person and their eyes in a brightly lit room and the same person in a darkly lit room. So in each case, the blue part is the iris, the black part is the pupil. So this part then just shows us the differences in bright light and dim light. Now in this case, the iris 
is made up of two sets of muscles. It has circular muscles. And radial muscles. Now both of these can contract or relax, but they don't contract at the same time. So, in dim light, what happens is the circular muscles relax. Now the circular muscles are the ones that go around here in a circular shape, which is why they're called that. And the radial muscles go like this. And sometimes people say that those are like the spokes of a bike, which go across like that. So dim light, the radial contract, circular relax, and the pupil becomes bigger or dilated. In bright light though, it's the opposite. So in this case, if it's bright, the circular contract and the radial relax and the pupil is constricted or smaller. Now, just a way I've got of remembering what happens in light in the dark. So in the dark, Russell Crowe can't read. Now, that means that the radial contract and the circular relax. So we know in the dark that your pupil gets bigger. So that was again, Russell Crowe can't read. The radial contract, circular relax. In the light, Red rockets can't crash. And that means that the radial relax, circular contract. As a result, the pupil gets smaller. And the point of that is to protect the retina. And just to say that again, red rockets can't crash radial relax circular contract now that's the end of the eye the only thing that you need to make sure that you don't get mixed up with is when you're looking at accommodation which is changing the shape of the lens and focusing light. It involves the ciliary muscle and suspensory ligaments. Whereas the other one, which is changing the amount of light or the pupillary reflex, that is the radial muscles and circular muscles. So it's really important you don't get mixed up with those two. Okay, goodbye.